<laughs> it might be bugs on the rest of you mugs, but it ain't no bugs on me. What's up, YouTube? You boy back once again with another sports topic, and today we're going to talk some football. Houston, Texas football. Hey, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, baby. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. You already know what it is. It's official. It happened. It's official. D'Amico Ryans is the new head coach of your Houston, Texas. You know what I'm saying? The Houston, Texas, I know you see it. I know you see it. You know what I'm saying? We back, baby. Hey, we are back. It's official. We is back. Before we get in there, like I've been telling you before, if you're liking the content, make sure you like the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you comment on all the videos. Make sure you share all the videos on all social media platforms. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, any type of social media platform you use, make sure you share them saying social media platforms. Also, follow me on social media. The link in the description below. Hey man, let's get this train rolling, baby. Hey man, let's get this channel up growing and growing and growing. I really, really appreciate all the help. So make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment, make sure you share the videos. Let's get this channel growing and growing. Hey, you already know it's it's it's, it's nothing but up now. It's, a, it's nothing but now. Nothing but good things on the horizon for the good old Houston Texans. Bay hey, man, it's official. D'Amico Rhines is the head coach of Houston Texans, signed a six-year deal. I haven't got the terms on the, the money yet, so I, I don't know how much the contract is. Uh, if y'all know, please let me know. Comment. Let me know if y'all know how much it is. I don't know how much the contact, uh, how much the contract is. I just know it's a six-year deal. And man, hey, <laughs> Cal McNair, Han McNair. Uh, Nick, uh, Nick Asario, D'Amico Ryan's, D'Amico Ryan's family, a uh, applause to all y'all because you couldn't have messed this up. You you couldn't have. You just absolutely couldn't have never messed this up. It was it was it was just destined to be this way. It was destined. Everything hit right for it, the the chance, the opportunity for you to be able to go on, like you know, what I'm saying for you to be able to go out and get D'Amico Ryan's to be your new head coach. All that bull that people out there from the national media was trying to spin about the Texas being racist and firing black coaches after one year. All that bull's been put to bed. All y'all, everybody looks stupid. All those people out there. All, all, all from the Tony Dungies to the uh, Michael Smith and I forgot whatever his coach's name is to the uh, uh, Keyshawn, uh, 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 um... Keyshawn Johnson, the Stephen A. Smiths, it's just everybody out there, out there just talking just mad, ridiculous noise. Ain't watched two minutes of Texas football, but got something to say because we fired Lovey Smith. When we all knew what it was. Everybody knew what it was with David Cully and, and, and for Lovey Smith. And when people know, we know y'all excited about Lovey Smith, y'all excited about D'Amico. Y'all know y'all excited about Lovey Smith. It's a difference. We were more happy that Lovey Smith wasn't, wasn't Josh McCown. We weren't excited about the hiring of Lovey Smith. We were more excited that Lovey Smith was not Josh McCown. We were more excited that Lovey Smith wasn't Jonathan Gannon, possibly. We were more excited that uh, Lovey Smith wasn't the 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 uh, a pen was well, it was a panic move, but it wasn't something just catastrophically bad like a Josh McCown and the Jack Hughesby was running amok through this franchise. That's what the Lovey Smith hire was. The reason why people were excited about the Lovey Smith hire. Don't get that twisted. This hire right here, people are genuinely excited. Man, shout out to everybody in Discord, man. Shout out to everybody in Soft Sports, all my brothers out there in Soft Sports. Because y'all know, the Discord was extremely live. The Discord for this announcement was extremely live. People who ain't seen in months, in a couple years actually, Joined the Discord again. Came back for great conversation, man. So shout out to everybody in the Discord. Shout out to everybody there in Soft Sports. Everybody out there, man. Shout out to all y'all, man. Um, we know exactly how it's been. We know exactly how it's been. And this, like, like I said, the, the, don't get that twisted. Don't don't get last year's or the previous highs twisted with this one. This this one right here. This one right here was it. And man, no, oh, speaking of people looking stupid, like I said, because everybody looks stupid. But nobody look as stupid as Acho. Acho, if he has never showed his complete biasness for one Deshaun Watson, um, because we all know he's a David Moon together guy, he's a friend of Deshaun Watson. You know, the whole time that him and Deshaun the whole time that uh uh um Deshaun Watson was going through what he was going through and uh, uh Marcellus Wally was out there. They didn't want to like they I, they didn't really have the conversation. Marcellus Wally would always get him in the conversation, but they would never really talk about it because you no, know, he was friends with Deshaun Watson and he's a David Moody Gator guy. He comes out there and tries to say he likes D'Amico, but then right after he says that bashes the Texans and I don't like this move. And everybody on the call uh, his co-host from uh Shady from uh, uh, Joy Taylor, 
uh, I forgot what the other guy's name is. They all was like, no, this makes sense. And brought out all the reasons why. And what Otto kept on doing, he kept saying no. And then when they was crushing him in this argument, he goes, well, if you look at all the coaches that made the playoffs, majority of them were offensive-minded coaches. Maybe this might not be a good move. Because nah, cause he was trying to spin the whole narr the whole black narrative thing to make him look even more stupid. And everybody talking about, no, the six-year deal. I don't care about six years because you can f still get fired. And they're like, no, even if he did get fired, he's still going to get paid. They're not going to continue to pay him and pay him and pay him. He's going to at least get three years because he got a six-year deal. Joy was getting at him. Like I say, Shady was getting at him. And the other guy was getting at him. It was all getting And then they was all talking about how uh, the type of guy he was. And again, if you respect this guy and say all these good things that he's a leader of men, he's great character, and he leads by faith, and all these different things, why don't, it is an insult to him saying that he made a bad decision on choosing Houston, Texas? Because don't you think if he is the, the one, not, not only is he the top guy, he's the top candidate. Uh, he's on everybody, every, it was five job openings. The Texans, the Broncos, the Cardinals, the Colts, and the Panthers all wanted to interview D'Amico Rhines. He only interviewed with two. They all requested. The Texans were the last team to interview him. He turned down the Colts, the Panthers, and the Cardinals, told them no. Instead, because he already interviewed with the Broncos first, and then interviewed with the Texans second over Zoom, turned down everybody else, and it was already knew what it was. Don't you think... If you believe all the things you say about this guy, that he's all this and that, won't you trust his decision? If he's making that type of decision, that right there tells you that this is a good thing. Not only he played for this. If he has, if he played for this team, if he has any post on the team, it would be him. Out of any of the coaching candidates, it would be him. Pick up the phone, call Dre. Hey, Dre, hey, what's going on in Houston? J. Joe, hey, man, what's going on in Houston? Hey, J.J., hey, bro, hey, hey what's going down? Hey, hey, Cushion. Hey, what's going on? Hey, cool. What's up? And then his wife is from the city? His family from the city? Live in the city? I think they still have a house in the city, if I'm not mistaken. That they come through doing something. So they have a pulse on what's going on in the city of Houston and when it comes with Houston, Texas. They know everything about it. So, because it's a phone, and what they don't know, everything is a phone call away to find out. So don't you think if he went through all that, and still chose the Houston Texans, don't that mean some things are changing? There has to be a reason, because of all money and good money. I mean, I look like a straight clown. And the whole thing, because he even admitted that the reason why the Texans hired David Cully was because Deshaun Watson wanted a black head coach, but still wanted to trade after they got a black head coach. Just saying. So that right there just shows how he really, you know what I'm saying, how he really vibing. And then an uh, even more insult to D'Amico is he going to pivot once he getting crushed in that conversation and pivot and go all the way and talk about defensive-minded head coaches. Now you're talking about defensive-minded head coaches when you just said five minutes ago that he's this, 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 and deserving of a job, but I don't like the job because I don't like the situation. And then when they everybody explained to you why it is a good situation, uh, well, no, this is a defense by coach. So maybe one good for the Texans. He's like a straight up clown, bro. Like he's like a straight up clown, bro. Like, man, I feel like a straight up clown, bro. Like, 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 like square business. Like I say, everybody looks foolish. Everybody who's talking about the Texans uh, in a negative light. Uh, uh, Rob Parker as well look foolish because the Texans did what they said they wasn't gonna do and hide. The, uh, they would not even go after another black coach. They're not gonna go after D'Amico. Everybody, no, no, no. It happened, and he's here. So they all look stupid. They all look foolish. But nobody looks more foolish than Acho because even when he gets caught in his foolishness like the rest of them, he doubles down and tries to go a whole other different way to look even more foolish. So I just want to put that out there that Acho looks completely foolish. Now, we need to see exactly who's going to have an office serve. I mean, I've been seeing uh, Bobby uh, Bobby Slovic, uh, the, 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 the passing game coordinator from the uh, – from the uh, 49ers, I've been, I, 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 I said that a couple days ago. I see they posted, they requested an interview for the receivers coach from the Bengals. I mean, obviously we know how how deep that receivers Bengals core is you know, with, with T. Higgins, with uh, 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 Jamar Chase, with Tyler Boyd. We know exactly how those guys how those guys play. So somebody of that caliber is cool. Um, 
So we 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 uh, remain to be seen. Yeah, I know I'm a huge Byron Leftwich fan. I know a lot of people don't like Byron Leftwich. How things transpired again. You have a four or five year old quarterback dealing with a divorce. When you look at Brady, you could tell Brady wasn't in it this year. I don't care what nobody said. When you look at Brady on the, you could look and tell Brady was not the same Tom Brady. You meant you add him being four or five years old. Not to mention when he's going with going through a divorce, which is probably strange on a lot of people when you're going through stuff like that, when you're going through personal things. So he's going through things off the field and his age as well. I don't think now. Don't get me wrong. I think some of those false war uh, uh for, war Byron left, which is fault. Um, I would love to have Byron on the staff. I don't know. Maybe he might. It might not be a good look to bring him in to strictly OC right now. Uh, but I definitely think he should be on the staff. I hope they could reach out to him. I don't know if they have a previous relationship. I know they played around the same time. But uh, I would want Byron Duffers to get another system under his feet. But you look and you see how D'Amico, the, the team that D'Amico played for under the Gary Kubiak, who he's coached with Kyle Shanahan, they both run that same type of system. So it makes more sense for him to go out and try, possibly get somebody under that type of tree, especially if you draft a quarterback like uh, um Bryce Young, and probably even C.J. Stroud, because I think C.J. Stroud still could feel that Gary Kubiak and Shanahan offense, I mean, match up, fit under it. It fit match up like a glove. Um, the way that, that C.J. can throw the football, I think he could go on that offense, but I do think the offense would be better suited for somebody like uh, um, Bryce Young because you get him out on the bootlegs and be able to be able to use his legs and be able to do a couple things and, and do a lot of damage um, outside the game. So, I definitely think they'll probably stick to somewhat similar to that that type of system, but um, like I say, like great job and I, and all all the reports like Albert I was Albert, I forgot what the dude's name is he like a straight up clown and the Broncos tried multiple times to interview him while he was in the city of Houston like after the, like he they, they tried multiple times and still couldn't get it done and then they pivot and end up signing Sean Payton. And if I'm not mistaken, gave up a first, a second, and potentially a third for Sean Payton. A first, a second, and potentially a third. So now I'm going to talk about people who want Sean Payton. Oh, I came up with the 12th pick in the front of back. Y'all look stupid. Like, 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 that was done. I, I can't believe y'all really, and, and don't get me wrong, I don't think that Sean Payton is a bad coach. I think Sean Payton is a Super Bowl winning coach. He's a good coach. I'm not giving up the 12th pick for a head coach. I'm not giving up the 12th pick for a head coach. Not at all. And they gave up a first, a second, and potentially a third? They better win something quick with the quickness. They better win something with the quickness. Like square bit, they been they been win something with the quick. They really is. But like I said, every everybody coming out the world where it seems like everybody is getting jumping back on board. It feels good to be a Texan fan again, y'all. Like it, it really feels good to be a Texan fan, bro. Like I said, we have not had this much anticipation and excitement coming into an off season since the twenty eighteen off season. Like, after Deshaun Watson's rookie year, and, okay, you thinking about what Deshaun Watson going to do when he come off the ACL. You might be a little bit worried because he had the torn ACL, but you were like, okay, we seen what happened. We ended up signing 100 badges that offseason as well. It was a lot of excitement going into that season. 19, going to the 19 season, not so much because the, it, it was a little bit of turmoil and you didn't know what you are going to do offensively, and then the Texans didn't look as good offensively. You know, they won nine games straight in the season, how they lost in the playoffs. You weren't really all that hype going into the 19. You were, you were hype. You were hype about it, but 18 had a little bit more excitement. And then we all know how 20 started off uh, after you you blow the 24 nothing lead and then you trade Hopkins and all that all that turmoil was going on going to that season. So that, that offseason wasn't all that good. Plus, the world was dealing with a pandemic. This is the best that we felt since then and possibly felt better now than we did then. We haven't even gotten to the draft yet. Uh, it just, it just feels so good. Like I say, it feels so exciting to be a Texan fan again. I feel like everybody, I feel like a big weight has been lifted off our shoulders. And I feel like we all here. We here. We here right now. Everybody is here. We are all engaged. And we ready to see what Cap is going to do. You know, that's what they call him back in the day. They called him Cap. And it's somebody who we can believe in because I do believe this is a Mike Tomlin type of hiring. I do believe he's a leader of men. He going to be able to get guys motivated. He going to be able to get guys ready. I mean, uh, 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 Shane even said that when they played in Philly, that D'Amico was a defensive guy. And he said that D'Amico would get him hyped to play. 
Shady at this time was already a multi-time Pro Bowler, all-pro type caliber running back, led the league in rushing, if I'm not mistaken, by that time. Was already, I, I think, was already the Eagles' all-time leading rusher by that time. And he said that D'Amico was getting him hyped and ready to play by the time D'Amico got there. Like, J.J. only played with D'Amico for one season, and he said he owes a lot of what he's done in the NFL to D'Amico. Brian Cushing, who played side-by-side D'Amico Ryan's, was a rookie of the year. And he said he owes his rookie of the year to D'Amico Ryan's. And speaking of Brian Cushing, I know people want to talk about bringing everybody, all these type of players back. No. 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 There's two players. There's two players that are former Texans that I have no problem with bringing back on the coach, being back as a coach. That is Brian Cushing, because he was a strength and conditioning coach with Bill O'Brien for a couple of years, maybe, I think like two, two, three seasons. So he's put in the coaching grind, showed that he's willing to one be able to coach. So I have no problem with you bring him on the staff. And I ain't saying DC linebackers coach and all that as an interim and possibly even train him to be a linebackers coach. Remember, they play side by side. Jonathan Joseph. Jonathan Joseph looks like a guy who like he he has that that, that coach feel like D'Amico. That when you watch him play, he gonna be a coach when he when he's done. He's a guy who's going to be a coach. With, I have no problem with J. Joe. And if I'm not mistaken, he was already working with Stingley and Petrie. He was already working with Stingley and Petrie already this past season. So I have no problem bringing him in. That's it. Maybe, well, not maybe because actually technically he's a coach right now. If you're able to get uh, uh, T.J. Yates. Because T.J. Yates also coached with the Texans. I think he was an assistant quarterback's coach. And now I think he's a passing game specialist with the Falcons. He's something on the Falcons staff. So he's another guy who's putting coaching hours. That's it. That's it. No JJ, no Andre. Give Andre a front office role. Get, put him in office somewhere. No, he don't need to be a coach. Put him in office somewhere. But no JJ, no Foster, no uh, 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 um, Kareem Jackson. You know, I think Kareem Jackson's still playing. No Dwayne Brown. No, 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 no other, nobody else, no, no, nobody else needs to be a coach. It's not, it's not no Owen Daniels. No, we don't need, we don't need to bring back the test reunion towards the coach. Everybody ain't ready to be a coach. Everybody's not fit to be a coach. Coach is putting in crazy hours. They up the, they up at the facility at five o'clock in the morning and don't get home to eight o'clock at night and be back at the facility at five o'clock in the morning. Not everybody is willing to put in that grind day in and day out. No days off. No sleep. They not willing to put in that grind. The guys I mentioned, Cushion and TJ have already shown that they put in the grind because they've been coaches before. Well, with CJ as a coach still right now, and, and, and Cushion's put in that work. So they show that they're willing to be in the grind, and John the Joseph has that coaching field. And John the Joseph already put in little increments of, of coaching, not like paid by the staff, but helping out as a mentor. So him possibly, probably wouldn't like say he has that coaching field. That's it. That is it. Like, like, that, 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 that's completely it. Like, like, don't, we don't need to bring back everybody to be a Texan. Like I say, Cushion and TJ because they've done it before and, and constantly doing it now. Jonathan Joseph because he shows that he looks like he, he should be one. Nobody else. Nobody else. So let this get to nobody else. Nobody else. And speaking of, so, and speaking of uh, Stingley and, uh, and Petrie, I mean, they fit, they, they fit uh, uh, um, D'Amico's defense way better than they fit Lovey's defense. Like, I cannot wait to see what D'Amico Rhines does with this defense and with those players like a Christian Harris, like a Derrick Stingley, like a Petrie. Y'all know Derrick Stingley was the most targeted cornerback last year without getting up a touchdown. Petrie had over 120-some tackles, five picks. Uh, I, I have to look and see his pass to flesh. I can't think of his pass to flesh off the top of my head. Should have been, should have been, at the very least, a second team All Pro. As a rookie, he really should have. Like, like he had that type of season, especially when you look at the pro, the uh, the All Pro safeties, first team and second team All Pro. He had bad numbers. Kind of give me that uh, um, Dante Robinson vibe. Dante Robinson's rookie year um, had better numbers than Chan Bailey, but Chan Bailey made the Pro Bowl over the over uh, Dante Robinson. I was very upset. It took me a long time to like Chan Bailey after that. I didn't even know when Chan Bailey fought. But I held a grudge against Chan Bailey for a long time behind that because the uh, Dante Robinson, should, as his rookie, should have made the Pro Bowl. But that was water under the bridge. And I say I, I definitely think Champ is one of those dudes as, as a cornerback position. But just, just put that out there. So I do think that Petrie did get slighted some, but not no more. 
And this move right here brings instant credibility to the team. You hear uh, 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 um, Demarcus, is it, is it Marcus Spears? Marcus Spears, is, is it Marcus or Demarcus? Marcus Spears. And, uh, 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 um, and Teddy Bruschi and Ron Clark talk glowingly about the Texans. And Ron Clark hit this and told me, we already know what, what loving them was. And the Texans got somebody that other people won't. Like, he I, I, I hit, 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 I hit it perfectly. Like, like it, it is some guys out there nationally that hit this perfectly. Like I said, it brings instant credibility to the team. It brings instant credibility to the organization. And we not done yet. We not done yet. We not done yet, y'all. Like, no, 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 no. This is this is this is the beginning of the dominance of the Houston Texans. This is the very beginning. This is the small piece. This is the dominance. This is the foundational part. The foundation. You get you a foundational head coach because you can't have a house on a bad foundation. You gotta have a solid foundation to get the to build to build a great house. This is the solid foundation. Now what we gonna do? We're going to attack that draft. We're going to get us a franchise QB. We're going to get other franchise play pieces. We're going to make moves in the offseason. Got cap space, things of that nature. In the AFC South, pss, nothing. The AFC, you already know I'm a Mahomes fan. Mahomes better watch out. I see y'all got Sean Payton. Y'all better watch out. Chargers, better watch out. Bengals, better watch out. Ravens. Y'all, boy, I need to do some with Lamar Jackson. Make sure y'all sign him. Y'all better watch out. Bills, Dolphins, Patriots. Y'all better watch out. Pittsburgh. Y'all, y'all better watch out. It's coming. So I ain't saying that we about to be dominating the AFC uh, 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 next year, not even the next two years. But it's coming. And when it happened, and when it happened, y'all gonna know. H Town. Y'all already know what it is, baby. Hey, like, subscribe if you haven't commented below. If you haven't clicked that bell, get more videos. I holla. Hey, we back, baby. We back. Woo! We back, baby.